Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our meeting. So I'll make a motion to reconvene in open session at 7 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Burke. Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Bourget. Here. Vice Chair Burke. Yes. Mrs. Kapiskus. Yes. Mr. LeClaire. Yes. Mrs. Costa is absent. Next, I'll make a motion to seal the closed session minutes of June 23rd, 2021. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Burke. Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Bourget. Yes. Vice Chair Burke. Yes. Mrs. Kapiskus. Yes. Mr. LeClaire. Yes. Just want to report that on a four to zero vote, the school committee approved the tentative collective bargaining agreements with the Woonsocket teachers and paraprofessionals. <laughs> Subject to the presentation of the fiscal impact statement, which will be presented at the next school committee meeting. Would you please stand with me for a moment of silence and the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next, we'll go into good and welfare. Is there anyone that would like to address the school committee? Please uh, state your name and your address for the record, please. Robert Stewart, president of the Woonsocket Teachers Guild. Our address here in town, 68 Cumberland. Um, I just want to say thank you to the school committee, Dr. McGee. We reached the we voted today, the RA and the general membership, to ratify the contract. And um, th there's a lot I could say about that, a lot of people to thank, um, including our team over here. But mostly I wanted to say that this is a fantastic step towards the collaboration that we talked about that creates a healthy environment where students want to learn and teachers want to teach without going work to rule, with feeling appreciated. and um, I think this was an amazing first step, and I just want to say thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Is there anyone else that would like to address the school committee? Hearing none, let's go into recognitions and announcements. Dr. McGee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Some really, really exciting things to report out here during my recognitions and announcements. So you see there are a lot of people in the audience here, many more than we usually have. And it's fantastic. We're going to recognize some wonderful students and staff and, and new, uh, new staff as well. So, But first, I want to start off by congratulating the Woonsocket High School class of 2021. Uh, the graduates had their ceremony last Friday. At, at Barry Field. Um, it was great to be back in person. It was great to be outdoors at Barry Field where we normally hold our graduation ceremony. Um, and I want to just speak uh, uh, briefly about the 2021 graduating class. Um, as, you know, as I stated during my superintendent's remarks at the, at the ceremony, um, th this class went through a lot over the last 15 months. Uh, they were an extremely resilient class, um, but as I, as I stated on Friday, I learned a lot from them through their ability to adapt to very challenging and dif difficult circumstances. And um, I, I wish them and their families the, the best of luck in their future endeavors. So again, congratulations on the 2021 Winsocket High School graduating class. Next, I would like to recognize um, some teachers here at, um, in Woonsocket, specifically at Hamlet Middle School, and some amazing students who, who are here this evening as well. So if the committee might be aware and the community might be aware that about four years ago, we uh, began the partnership with um, an organization called Generation Citizen. And Generation Citizen um, were, were uh, an organization that came in to work with um, a variety of, of classes across the district, specifically at Woonsocket Middle School and at Woonsocket High School. Um, they worked with um, primarily um, 
social studies teachers, because Generation Citizen is a social studies endeavor. Um, and it's the, uh, the ability for us to bring civics education into our classrooms, specifically our social studies classrooms. Um, and as I said, we've been uh, working with them for the last four years. Uh, this year, I'm very proud to announce that um, our teacher um, on team 8-2, and she is here, um, it's Miss Liz Payolella. If, if Liz would stand, please, I'd, I'd like to first recognize her. Across the state, uh, recently, Liz was, was named the Rhode Island Teacher Changemaker by Generation Citizen. So um, that, that's, a, that's an amazing accomplishment. And we're looking at, you know, we're talking about, you know, not just a handful of schools, but many, many schools across the state, both middle and, and high school. So I want to recognize Liz for the amazing work that she's done with her students on Team 8-2. Um, we're very excited to, to have her here in Woonsocket. She's a, a, an amazing teacher, and I want to thank her. Um, I also have her, her students, some of her students who are here. And when I call your name, if you could kindly stand, uh, we have Nathan Vasquez. We have Brady Schobel. And we have Jalen Putney. Is here as well. I believe he's here. No, maybe not. Are any other students here, Miss Renegaldo? That okay. So I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to speak a little bit about the work that the students did to be recognized um, as as their teacher uh, was recognized as a Rhode Island teacher change maker. Uh, teammate two was named the best overall middle school award, um, and their project was basically not not really basically it was it was quite an extensive project. They looked at um, issues that affect uh, Woonsocket, the community of Woonsocket, and specifically Woonsocket Middle School. And the area that they focused on was drug abuse. And they, they felt as though through the, um, the, the research that they did and, and the, the different conversations that they had with, with folks in the community and at the school that, uh, unfortunately, drug abuse is a big problem in Woonsocket. And they took that one step further, and they looked at the drug abuse, um, the, the health curriculum that we have in uh, the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade at both of our middle schools. And they looked at it and they had some questions. They had some, they, they, they were advocates. They advocated for themselves and they advocated for their peers. And they actually reached out to, to me and to Dr. Holt. Uh, members of Team 82 sent us emails asking if we could have a conversation with them about the health curriculum and providing more opportunities for our students to receive um, you know, guest speakers to come in and for them to learn more about the, um, you know, the negatives to, to, to drug use and drug abuse. And Dr. Holt and I met with them, you know, with, with uh, their teacher, uh, their teachers, I should say, and we were so impressed. They put a PowerPoint presentation together, which was part of the project that they put together um, that, that won them the award. And we were just so impressed by their, their advocacy, their self-advocacy, and their, their ability to, to communicate their needs and, and to open those lines of communication between student and teacher, student and administrator. And um, they were just so impressive. It culminated with a meeting uh, about a week or so ago with the health teachers at the middle schools and the, the uh, students and their teacher and Dr. Holt and I attended that as well. So again, I, I just want to recognize them for being tremendous students. We're so proud of the, the work that they do. And I really believe that we have here, you know, in the, in the audience, some, some future uh, community advocates here in Woonsocket. So if, if you look at these students, I, I, I would say that we're, we're in a pretty good place and Woonsocket, the community of Woonsocket is is going in the right direction with students that have the level of character um, and determination um, and self-advocacy that these students have. So I just want to give them a big round of applause.
Ms. Renegaldo, did we have another uh, student from 8-2? Jalen is here? Okay. Jalen! All right, Jalen. Next, I'm going to make two announcements for two um, administrators that we are going to be uh, very fortunate to add to our administrative leadership team here in Woonsocket. The first is I'm going to announce the appointment of the Kevin K. Coleman Elementary School Principal. So I'm pleased to recommend Ms. Abby Kackness for the position of principal at the Coleman Elementary School. Ms. Kackness joins the Woonsocket Education Department with over 14 years of public school experience. Most recently, Ms. Kackness was the assistant head of school for the Hope Academy in Providence. There she facilitated professional learning communities, led professional development, and conducted cycles of instructional rounds to lift the level of teaching and learning. Prior to her role as assistant head of school, she was the literacy instructional coach as well as reading specialist. Ms. Kackness holds a bachelor degree in education and a master's of education in reading and language arts from the University of Vermont. She's highly qualified for the Rhode Island Department of Education regulations as a building level administrator. Based on Ms. Kackness's education and work experience, I highly recommend and am excited for her to, to take on the position of, as principal of Coleman Elementary School. So I want to welcome um, Abby here this evening. In addition to the principalship at Coleman, we um, have been doing interviews over the last couple of weeks for the principalship at Villanova Middle School. So I am very pleased to recommend Ms. Kimberly Luca for the position of principal at Villanova Middle School. Yes, yes, you, you, can, you can clap, that's okay. Ms. Luca joins the Woonsocket Education Department Department with over 27 years of public school experience. Most recently, Ms. Luca was the principal for the Green Elementary School in Fall River, Mass. And prior to that, she was principal at Nathan Bishop Middle School in Providence. Her most recent leadership experience as a middle school principal, she was provided with opportunities to work with diverse students and families, to reorganize systems and strategically reallocate resources while overseeing the building's crisis team, student support team, instructional leadership team, and school improvement team. Ms. Luca holds a Bachelor of Education degree in History and Social Studies and a Master's of Educational Administration from the University of Rhode Island. She's highly qualified for the Rhode Island Department of Education regulations as a building level administrator. Based on Ms. Luca's education and work experience, I am very pleased to announce uh, her as the new principal of Villanova Middle School. Congratulations, Kim. And finally, I just want to thank everyone, teachers, students, staff, families, parents, the community, the school committee, um, as we approach the end of the school year. As we all know, Friday is the last day, and this year has been an incredible ride. Uh, we certainly have had many, many downs, but we've had, I think, just as many ups as well. I think what we learned from this past year here in Woonsocket at, is that there's nothing that we can't do. There is nothing that we can't accomplish. And I've been in this district for you know, over 20 years. Um, I've had the, the, um, the, the pleasure of serving as superintendent for the last almost seven years. And every year I say how proud I am of our, of our staff, our teachers, our students, our families. Um, but this year has is, is, is been an amazing year. And I am just so proud of how everyone worked together to overcome and to accomplish what appeared to be really insurmountable odds. It, it wasn't easy, it wasn't pretty, it wasn't perfect, but I am just so very proud of all of our students, families, teachers and staff, and I wish them all a very healthy, happy and safe summer vacation and we will see them, we'll see them tomorrow, but we'll see them again. Um, <laughs> in the fall, uh, hopefully with un under much better circumstances. Um, but again, I wanna, I wanna just thank everyone for, for all of their hard work and dedication. Um, it has been an honor and a pleasure to work with all of them. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my announcements and recognitions.
Thank you, Dr. McGee. I also want to add my congratulations to all our students, teachers, administrators, especially the class of 2021 for their, all the hard work that they've had and all the challenges that they've met over this last 15 months. Uh, I want to congratulate our, our students who, who came up, who really earned this award that they received tonight. I want to welcome Kim and Abby uh, to our district. We look forward to working with you. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. And I also want to thank the Woonsocket Teachers Guild uh, negotiation team uh, and all their members uh, for working very well with our negotiation team. And, and as Mr. Stewart said, it was a great deal of collaboration and cooperation during this process. And good news, it did not last 15 months like the last time. So I want to thank you all uh, for working well with us. And I, I was going to say I'm going to miss our Tuesdays and t Thursdays, but not really. <laughs> but I want to thank you again. Thank you. Does any, does any other school committee member want to add comments? Mrs. Kapiskas, please. You know I do. I would love to add my congratulations to the class of 2021. Unfortunately, because of my personal physical limitations right now, wasn't able to attend any of the other graduation exercises this year, but I was able to get to the graduation at Barryfield. And as I sat there, I really, really struggled between my joy for the class of 2021 and my sorrow for the class of 2020. My son was part of the class of 2020, the class that didn't have a graduation. And um, I sat there with the program in my hand and looked at it and said, I'll never have that for my son's scrapbook. And um, they started to, I did well till they started to play pomp and circumstance, then I lost it. Um, and I started to cry because I'll never see my son walk into pomp and circumstance. And my son has special needs, so I don't know whether or not he'll ever have another graduation in his future. And he's certainly not the only student from Winsocket that was in that situation. So I, I had mixed feelings as I sat at the graduation, but the reason I'm bringing all this up is I want to ask a question. My recollection is when I sat on that graduation committee, trying to plan what we were going to do in 2020. I recall being told that the class of 2020, if 2021 was going to have graduation, 2020 was going to get a makeup graduation. And that didn't happen. And I'm just wondering if there's anything planned or is it just over for the class of 2020? As my son puts it, we'll have an asterisk next to us in the scorebook for the rest of our lives. I'm just curious, has there anything been done to plan anything? It's kind of late now. We do something this summer. We're all going to melt into Barry Field, but I, I'm I just I'm thinking about it, and and I have someone chirping in my ear about it constantly. My knowledge uh, so far, Ms. Kapiskas, I, I do not know of any plans for the class of 2020. You're welcome. Any other school committee member have any comments? And I'll make a motion to receive and place on file the recognitions and announcements. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Burke. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, uh, we'll go into the approval minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the June 9, 2021 closed session minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Burke. Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Bourget? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Kapiskas? Yes. Mr. LeClaire? Yes. Next, I'll make a motion to approve the June 9th, 2021 open meeting minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. LeClaire. Any changes, amendments to the uh, to the minutes? Dr. McGee, please. Chairman Bourget? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Kapiskas? Yes. Mr. LeClaire? Yes. Next, I'll make, uh, we'll go into the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to discuss and approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Burke and Mr. LeClaire. Does any school committee member want to take any items out of the consent agenda to discuss? Mr. Chairman, I don't want to take an item out, but I just want to offer uh, uh, good luck to our two athletes that are heading off to uh, Eugene, Oregon to compete in the National Scholastic Athletics Foundation track, track event. Uh, they've been two outstanding Woonsocket athletes, and I, I think we just want to wish them the best. Um, as, as they can continue on competing. Thank you, Vice Chair Burke. I agree with you. Uh, it's a great feat. It's a, and it's great for Winsocket, and it's great for these students. 
Anyone else? Then, uh, Dr. McGee, roll call for the consent agenda. Chairman Bourget? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Kapiskas? Mr. LeClaire? Yes. Dr. McGee, I'll ask for your report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll start off with personnel. Uh, we have added five new uh, positions to the Woonsocket Education Department. Um, some of them are here this evening. Uh, are, are, and we, again, we welcome um, our, our new administrators to the Woonsocket Education Department. We also have added uh, a total of 27 stipend positions, and those stipend positions primarily are, are summer school and, and summer type enrichment activities that we're going to be providing our students uh, this summer. Second uh, agenda item is an update on the contract negotiations, which we have already discussed this evening. Um, I, 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 too, would like to thank uh, Mr. Stewart and the, the union leadership um, for, for their um, hard work and, and really collaboration as we, uh, you know, went through this process. It was not nearly as, uh, as, as stressful as it was three years ago, thank goodness. Um, but, you know, I, I think that... Uh, it, it, it was nice, you know, working with a group of folks who you respect and who, you know, you, you trust. And um, so we're, I'm just very happy that we've come to a tentative agreement. And I look forward to, you know, working, continuing to work with the union and, the, and their membership for the next three years. Uh, lastly, um, I'm going to provide an update on summer programs. We are continuing to work hard to provide our students across the district in grades K through 12 summer opportunities. We have most recently met uh, with the, um, each of the community-based organizations individually to talk about specifically what they're offering, not only this summer, but as we move into the school year. Um, and then, of, of course, you know, next summer. So we're going to be partnering with them over the next three years around our, um, our, our enrichment opportunities uh, during the summer, as well as enrichment opportunities during the school year. So we're in a good position there. We start the summer programming, um, most of the summer programming will begin on July 6th and will run through the uh, 13th and in some cases the 20th of August. So having said that, I, I you know, welcome any questions that the committee may have at this time. Anyone? Then I'll make a motion to receive and place on file the superintendent's report. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. LeClaire. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next, we'll go into the su school subcommittee reports, and we'll begin with health and wellness. Uh, Dr. Uh, Vice Chair Burke? And Call me Dr. Burke if you like. But. Well, you got a D. I'm not sure if it's a Don, Doctor, or what, but you, you've you been a teacher for what, 45 years? 45 wonderful years, yes. There you are. Dr. Burke. Um, anyway, uh, the health, health and Wellness Committee met uh, last week. And um, basically, we continue to talk about the three major topics, nutrition, physical activity, and mental health. And our key component of our discussion uh, was to talk about what's going to happen this summer, because we are planning for the summer. And the most important thing that I just want to reveal from that meeting is the Summer Eats program that is being offered uh, through the Sodexo and the Winsocket Education Department. From July 6th to August 20th, from Monday through Friday, there'll be a food service van uh, that'll go through the city of Woonsocket. Uh, there will be um, five locations beginning at 11 o'clock in the morning, and this van will travel throughout the city offering breakfast and lunch. There will be lunch for that day and breakfast for the next day. Um, and just where the van will be, um, will be at Rock Ridge Apartments at 11 o'clock, Plaza Village at 11.30, World War II Memorial Park at 12 noon, Dunn Park at 12.30, and finally at, at 1 o'clock, Moran Heights. Um, so once again, Sodexo is continuing their program of, of offering um, uh, nutrition, nutritious meals uh, to the students uh, of Woonsocket. And, um, and that's the most important thing that, that came out of our meeting, and that's what I would like to pass along. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Vice Chair Burke. Uh, does that mean that there will not be, you know, every year Sodexo usually sponsors like a picnic? Do you know if that's going to no, happen this year? No, that's not planned this year, no. Okay. Okay. Any comments for Vice Chair Burke? 
I'll make a motion to receive and place on file the health and wellness update. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. LeClaire. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we'll have the CLAC update. I'll ask Mrs. Kapiskas to give us that. A very short update based on the shortest CLAC meeting I've ever had in my 14 years running CLAC. Uh, we met on June 10th. That the meeting was called to order at 6.05 because it conflicted with the middle school um, honor society induction. We had only two parents at the meeting. It was a very short meeting. It ended up with just basically with Janet, Dr. Janet Sullivan very well in her retirement was her last CELAC meeting with us officially. Um, and we all expressed our wishes. There was a, I don't remember what it's called, but it's an internet thing that we were all allowed, we all had an opportunity to write notes to her to wish her well. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like a message board? Yeah, something like that. I've gone set it up, I don't know what it was, but, um, and she got messages from uh, faculty, families, and even students. Um, we wished her well in her retirement, told her to come back and visit her, visit us because we're going to miss her. Um, and at the end of our greetings to Janet, we concluded our meeting at 6.17, a grand total of 12 minutes. And um, <laughs> we will not be meeting over the summer. Our next meeting will be in September. It will not be on the first Thursday. It will be on the second Thursday in September, uh, simply because the first Thursday is the first day of school, that everyone's in class, and we thought that was probably not appropriate. Uh, so we're going to meet the, the second Thursday in September. It will remain virtual. If you want to be invited to the list, send me an email. I'll add you to my list, and you'll get the link. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Kapiskas. Uh, I'll make a motion to receive and place on file a CLEC update. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Burke. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we'll go into the technology update. I'll turn it over to Vice Chair Burke. Thank you. Uh, the technology subcommittee met last week as well for a very brief meeting. Um, and I'm going to now turn it over to Mr. Notarani, who will give us the details. Thank you, Chairman. So uh, we did meet and we discussed um, upgrades to our systems. In particular, we talked about upgrading the internet system, telephone system. Um, we've created social media accounts for all of, or specifically Facebook accounts for all our pages for all of these elementary, middle, and high schools and the high school in WACTEC. We talked and discussed the electronic enrollment and registration system. We discussed the GoGuardian parent portal and the new updates that we're doing to that for the upcoming school year. As you approved this evening, and, and thank you for that, uh, the student devices, for the Chromebooks and the iPads. Uh, at the time, we had about 20 work orders in the system, and then we adjourned. So that concludes the update for the tech subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Notoriani. Any questions, comments for our director? Chairman. Uh, Shibber. Thank you. I just want to make a comment. Um, we've obviously talked about the difficulties of this year. And one of the ways we were able to survive and maybe get through the year was through the use of technology. Um, I, I really think we should give a lot, there's a lot of kudos that should, should be given that to many individuals who helped us get through this difficult year. But uh, the technology department, led, led by Mr. Nardarani, um, really stepped up. Um, if you look around the state and even outside the state, a lot of districts were clamoring to catch up you know, for their students and for their teachers. But uh, the technology department, led by Mr. Nardarani, always was proactive. You know, we had the Chromebooks before we needed them. You know, and, and the teachers had the iPads. That, you know, so. So I, I was really amazed at the amount. And, and we had people, um, uh, you know, making our programs. And obviously our finance director was right there, you know, providing us with the monies. But, um, but I, I, think, I think we gotta, we got to note that as we get through this year that, that really um, some great strides were made by the technology department uh, to make so many fact, things happen. So. Congratulations, Al. Thank you Good for job. that, uh, Vice Chair Burke. That was well done. Um, well deserved, uh, Mr. Notoriani. You did a great job, you and your staff, and all the administrators who really helped to distribute the Chromebooks and all the, uh, all the help that parents were given and students were given. Uh, without all of that, uh, this, this school year would have been horrific. Uh, it was difficult enough, but it would have been even worse. 
So thank you for that. We also should mention to just my Mrs. Neal and Mrs. Donato, uh, who spearheaded uh, the technology out into the out into the community, uh, to the students and the teachers. That's that's right. Thank you. I'll make a motion to receive and place on file a technology update. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. LeClaire. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, since Dr. Sullivan and Ms. Morrell are not here this evening, we will dispense with the special education update. We'll catch it at the next meeting. Next, we'll go into unfinished business. Um, and the first item is a discussion and approval on bid 21-02 interactive panels. So I will make a motion to remove this agenda item from the table. We are on, correct? You're on, Mr. Chairman. Fine. So I'll make the motion to, re to remove it from the table. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. LeClaire. Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Bourget. Yes. Vice Chair Burke. Yes. Mrs. Kapiskus. Yes. Mr. LeClaire. Yes. Now we have before us uh, the bid 2102 for the interactive panels. So I'll make a motion to discuss and approve this bid. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Burke. Any discussion on this item? Mr. Perry, maybe you can let us know exactly what an interactive panel is. Uh, I, I would actually like to defer to the chief operating officer on this one. Before I think we could, vote uh, on this after being tabled and yeah. taken off on the table, I feel like I've, we've been to a seven-course meal with this thing. I feel the same way, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Notoriani, you have the first course to this meal. Thank you, Chairman and Mr. Perrier. So, so. The question is, what is an interactive panel, Mr. Notariani? Yes, Chairman. So an, interact, an interactive panel is uh, an interactive board that's mounted in a classroom where the teachers and students can go up and manipulate the device. It's, it's almost like a whiteboard, but it's electronic, next into our technology and the internet and allows for a more interactive approach to instruction and learning in the classroom. So rather than a student sitting back, looking at a teacher and visuals on the board, they can go up and interact. For example, picture a, uh, you know, the United States, and you could then take and manipulate the states and configure them within the outline of the overall United States. That would be an example of, of one use of, of that tool. So it's something that um, we use um, pretty aggressively at the Career Tech Center, and we're, we're hoping to do it um, further down the line in some of the other buildings. But for tonight, this, and I'll defer back to Mr. Perrier, this is for a purchase at the Area Korean Technical Center. Now, Thank you. We're, we're approving four of these. Is it four? And my question really was, why only four? We already have many of them in place. This is in addition to what we already have there. Uh, I apologize. I, I wasn't uh, prepared for this question in terms of an extensive answer, but I, I would say this is going to come close to rounding out, having one in every classroom there. And then from there, uh, I, I guarantee the tech subcommittee and the full committee will be hearing about additional purchases in the near future for all of our other schools. Thank you very much. Any school committee member have any comments, questions for Ms. Notoriani? Uh, Vice Chairman. Chairman. Yep, sorry. Um, is there uh, some uh, professional development uh, that will be afforded to teachers on how to use these panels? Or has that already happened? So we've already had some professional development with the existing panels, and we will have some additional professional development for these. These are a slightly different model than what we've used in the past, and um, we're looking forward to seeing what some of the capabilities are on these new units. So we'll be exploring it, most likely doing some in-house professional development. Just one final question. Um, I, I was familiar with uh, something called a smart board. Is this the same thing? Yes, Vice Chairman. So the, these so uh, smart boards, um, they have Promethean boards. Those are all different brand or types of smart boards. But the overall um, guiding um, title of them would be would be an interactive board. Thank you. Anyone else? Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Bourget. Yes. Vice Chair Burke. Yes. Mrs. Kapiskus. Yes. Mr. Leclerc. Yes. Next item is I'll make a motion to discuss and approve the amendments to the middle school grading policy for second passage. Is there a second? Second. second. Any additional comments on, on this item? Chairman. Vice Chair Burke. Thank you. Um, 
I'm sorry to say, but I'm going to continue to vote no on this amendment. Um, since our last meeting, I was reminded, uh, I, I remembered how, I think it was maybe five years ago, being on the curriculum committee and Stephen Boss and I were part of the curriculum committee. We sat down and we helped put together this middle school grading policy. I thought it was a great idea when we put it into play then. And as I told you that personally, I have followed it for the last 20 some odd years in my own teaching. And um, I think we got to be careful that we ensure that students always can find a way to pass. Uh, and I'm afraid there was some element of this amendment uh, that could um, derail some <laughs> students from passing. So that's why I'm continuing to vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Burke. Anyone else? Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Borgia. Yes. Vice Chair Burke. No. Mrs. Kapiskas. Yes. Mr. LeClaire. Yes. Next, we'll go into new business. The first item is that I'll make a motion to discuss and approve the amendments to the parent involvement policy for first passage. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Burke. Dr. McGee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So committee has before them the uh, draft of the Woonsocket Education Department Parent and Family Engagement Policy. Um, just so you know, the, um, that's a requirement of Title I. So we, each year we have to um, either mod make modifications to our existing uh, policy, but we have to have a policy um, each year. Mrs. DeRiso, our Director of Literacy in Title I, um, is, the, is the director who coordinates that process. And the one thing I would bring your attention to is on page two, and it's highlighted in yellow, um, and it's to the extent the PAC exists and remains active. So typically what, what, would, what would normally happen um, is the, the parent involvement policy would, as, as it goes around and is, and is viewed at each of the schools, the Title I schools in the district, it would ultimately go to the, the, um, the PAC. Parent Advisory Committee. However, we, we do not have an existing PAC. We haven't had a, a, an existing PAC for a few years now. So we just wanted the, I just wanted the committee to know that um, it, it's not going to the PAC because there isn't a PAC. Um, but when hopefully at some point in the future the, the PAC is uh, revived, then it would go to the PAC for the final um, draft before it would come to the school committee. As I recall, this policy was updated last July uh, in 2020 with very little modification. Any member of the school committee have any thoughts, comments on, on this policy? In case you're wondering why the PAC language is still there, I'm, I'm the cause of that. Because I Thank don't, don't want to see the PAC language come out because I'm always hopeful I, I'm not to pat myself on the back because I'll break my arm and I have enough problems right now. But pretty much the pack was, there were four people that were running it, um, Carmen Busher, uh, Cindy Stepanian, Denise Eau Claire, and to a much lesser degree me because I was running the CLAC. And as all our children graduated, unfortunately the pack collapsed because parents weren't ready to step forward and take over. I always remain hopeful that somewhere out there in some PTO that I'm not aware of, there's our next pack leader. Um, if not, maybe when I leave the school committee, I'll bring the PAC back somehow. Um, but I think that they're too, is too important a part of the, the community involvement and the family involvement piece to see them come out of the, and we fought hard to get in there. And I just don't want to see it drop. So when I spoke to Mr. Rizzo about it, we agreed that we were going to just modify the language to say to the extent the PAC exists and then leave the PAC language in throughout. And that's what was done. I was very happy that the school department was willing to make that accommodation. Thank you. So that was the one uh, comment I had was, I don't think we have a PAC right now, but hopefully we will at some point. Always looking. Anyone else? Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Bourget. Yes. Vice Chair Burke. Yes. Mrs. Kapiskas. Yes. Mr. LeClaire. Yes. Next, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve the high road contract. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. LeClaire. Dr. McGee, Mr. Perrier. Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Perrier. Dr. Sullivan talked to me today about the contract, and she has expressed some concerns uh, about the contract for the upcoming fiscal year. As nobody from the special education department is here to speak about it, I would move to table this item until the next meeting. 
And I'll make a motion to table this uh, this item. Is there a second? Second. Dr. McGee? Chairman Bourget? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Kapiskis? Yes. Mr. LeClaire? Yes. Since there is no other item on our agenda, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 7.40 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Burke, Dr. McGee. Chairman Bourget? Yes. Vice Chair Burke? Yes. Mrs. Kapiskis? Yes. Mr. LeClaire? Yes. We're adjourned. Thanks, wow. everyone. All right. Right on, right on, right on. All right. <laughs> the debate right